winter creamed corn today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started before I do much chat. Uh, I'm going to put a tablespoon of olive oil or uh, whatever vegetable oil you happen to have into the pan. Uh, we want it to get just a little bit hot, but the pan was pretty hot when I put it in, so I don't think it'll take a long time for that to happen. It's already starting to sizzle a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in the rest. It's about a cup of chopped onion, which is about um, a medium onion. Uh, and chop it as fine as you want it to be. It doesn't have to be this fine. You could leave it in bigger chunks. But I wanted it to mimic uh, corn. And then I'm going to add a cup of yellow bell pepper. Uh, if you were in a better season, uh, you could use a banana pepper in here instead of a yellow bell pepper. Again, I'm trying to mimic the appearance of the corn. You could use a different color. Uh, but uh, this is just the way I'm going it, about it today because regular cream corn is not going to have a lot of uh, color added to it generally either. Now I'm going to let this continue to cook uh, for about four to seven minutes until the onion becomes translucent. Uh, what I'm doing here is usually in the summertime if you want cream corn, the, the way that's traditionally done is you take a fresh ear of corn and you strip the kernels off and collect the liquid that comes off with it and that becomes the creamy part of it. There's not actually cream added to it. But if you didn't can enough or freeze enough, uh, this is not the best time of year to get a good ear of corn in order to be able to do that. So we're gonna try and um, imitate or simulate uh, what that might be like if we had done it uh, during the summertime, which is why it's called winter cream corn. Okay, the onion is, is translucent now. The, the peppers are still going to have a fair amount of texture. In fact, they, they will keep some of that texture uh, through the entire process. What I have now is two cups of frozen corn. And we're going to get those in there. We're going to uh, bring this back and let it continue to cook for about two more minutes. And this is just going to go through the thawing stage. It's not going to have finished cooking the corn, uh, but we're going to We've got more ingredients to go. Okay, because we weren't able to capture the juice as it came out of the corn because we bought it from the supermarket, uh, we're going to create the creaminess to it. So I'm going to add about a half a cup, anywhere between a third to a half a cup of evaporated milk. Now you can use skim evaporated milk. That works really well because corn itself would not have a lot of it, uh, of fat in it. Uh, so uh, we're going to let this simmer. Uh, and cook down and, until it thickens and becomes more creamy, uh, it's going to be thinner than the, the cream corn that you would get in a can from the supermarket, but uh, uh, it's uh, not going to be a, as thick as actual cream. There will still be some liquid running out around the sides of it when it's done. But you want to, to, this to go ahead and cook down, which is why evaporated milk works so well, because it already has uh, a good share of the, the water evaporated from it, so it's already concentrated, and so we're going to continue to concentrate that down. It's also already cooked, so you don't have as much concern that it's going to scorch while it does this. But keep it at a, at a good enough simmer. You can also consider doing this in a wider pan, even a skillet, and that will allow evaporation to uh, happen a little bit faster. This may take uh, five to seven minutes. You can see this has gone for about five minutes, and it's really concentrated so that we, we don't have as much liquid moving down there. So we're going to go ahead and finish this up off the burner. If you wanted it thicker, you could go ahead and cook it a little bit longer. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of black pepper to this. And again, this is something you can adjust based on your family preferences. And then somewhere between a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt to this. The thing you need to remember at this point is you need to stir that really well so that somebody doesn't get all the salt or all the pepper. And then this is basically ready to go. It's much more creamy. It's got a lot better flavor than what you get out of the can. It is not an authentic creamed corn by any means, but I think you'll enjoy it more than uh, uh, what you get when you uh, just open a can and pour it in and heat it up. Uh, this is winter creamed corn with a little bit of garnished green onion here to it, which is also something we can get in the wintertime. Uh, winter creamed corn for Oklahoma Gardening. I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.